Hello everyone, my name is Samrat Priyadarshi and I'm a cloud engineer at Google and in this video I'm going to share about what a DevOps engineer do on a daily basis. There are various roles which are very similar to DevOps engineer like cloud engineer as well but uh, there's an overlap between both of them so whatever I'm going to share today might overlap maybe 50 to 60 percent with other roles like cloud engineer as well. Now many small companies or you know startups hire for a role called DevOps engineer but the person ends up doing basically everything right because the overlap is there between cloud engineer and DevOps engineer. So in this video I'm not going to share or compare the differences between cloud engineer DevOps engineer etc. I'm just going to show what on a day-to-day -day basis a DevOps engineer does. So to dive right into it, the first thing which a DevOps engineer does day in, day out is, you know, building CI/CD pipelines. What does that mean, right? So we all know the full form of uh, CI/CD, continuous integration, continuous deployment. But what does that mean? So basically, it's all about making the software delivery process much efficient, right? So I think 10 years or 15 years back, companies organizations used to deploy maybe twice a month or once in a quarter etc right but with the coming of devops that cycle has reduced a lot right so now you would see companies like amazon deploying like multiple times in a day right so that's what devops has done it has increased the software delivery life cycle but what do we do in ci cd right so basically what we do is uh you know we build the pipeline where maybe the software engineer writes the code it gets tested maybe you need tested first and then we build a docker image out of it and then maybe we deploy the docker image to a gke or any other managed kubernetes platform but gke as we all know is the best out there and then you know the entire testing happens right so this entire flow that i just mentioned right like development of the code building of the image and then deploying of the image and maybe in between you will include something like security vulnerability of the image now that goes into the area of DevSecOps but I'm not going to dive deeper into that one but you get the idea right so this is the entire CI CD pipeline and day in day out you might be creating or deployment to GKE maybe deployment to some other serverless service like cloud functions or cloud run etc or to a VM right some legacy applications etc because not every time you know all the applications you know our containers and another thing you you do in terms of pipeline is you build pipeline for you know basically everything right for example deploying your terraform port you do init plan and apply right to various environments dev uat staging production so that's the first major thing which a devops engineer do now the second thing which i learned but highlighted in the first one as well which is you write tons of infrastructure as code, right? That might involve Terraform, Pulumi, or CDK, or, you know, there's a new thing in the market called Crossplane, which is picking up a lot of pace as well. But, you know, you write infrastructure as code day in, day out as well to build that infrastructure, right? So you'll not be able to deploy your softwares to, you know, GK with how first spinning up GK, right? And the associated resources around it, like, for example, VPCs, subnets, firewalls, routes, and if there is any storage dependencies etc right that's where the infrastructure is code comes in where you build the infrastructure first in a you know repeatable way right if you have to scale right to thousands of uh, applications or thousands of google projects you will not be able to scale until unless you have a repeatable way or a framework developed for terraform right so that you can deploy anything that is needed by the application team right because at the end of the day there will be multiple environments and multiple GKE clusters, right? So you need a way to provision that infrastructure at scale and then use the CI/CD process to deploy to that particular infrastructure. And over time, you know, you just optimize these ports or your CI/CD pipeline and then make it much more efficient, right? So that's the second thing. Now, the third thing is automation. Now you would say like, hey, pipeline should cover automation, right? But I would say no, right? Because automation is totally separate thing where, for example, you are building something for disaster recovery, right? So you build your Terraform thing, you build your, uh, you know, maybe Argo CD pipeline to have the appropriate Helm charts, etc. to deploy to the secondary region as well, which is your ER region. By the way, if you haven't checked my Argo CD tutorial, you can check out that Argo CD tutorial series by clicking here, right? So you'll have Terraform and all, but sometimes you'll need a script, right? Which does something which is not possible through Terraform or pipeline, right? Like, it can be very small, maybe you are changing something in the DNS, etc., for which you are triggering a script, right? So that's a very small example, but there are times where you will write scripts to maybe make a manual process much more efficient, right? So I remember my 2016 days where I wrote a small script to start and stop an EC2 instance, example at 10 p.m. stop the instance, 
and at uh, 10 a.m. in the morning start the instance using a uh, AWS Lambda function, right? Because at that time, the functionality today is built in native to the platform, but at that time it's not there, right? So we automated this for multiple AWS accounts, et cetera. So this is just another example of automation. So the fourth point is very important, which is around troubleshooting. So whenever an issue occurs, right, it can be at the DNS level, load balancer level, application layer or application code layer or at the database layer or the cache layer, et cetera, right? So there are various layers, right, uh, which comprises of an application. Now you have to be comfortable at each and every layer, otherwise you will not be able to troubleshoot effectively. Now I've covered what are the two most important skills for a DevOps engineer. I've covered their troubleshooting and the other one is collaboration or communication. You can check that video again uh, by clicking here. But yeah, coming back to troubleshooting, right? So you have to be comfortable with the entire application or the entire infrastructure stack as a, as a whole, right? Because if you don't know something like it would, be very hard to troubleshoot something, right? So for example, why a particular request is being throttled, why scale up is not happening, why scale down is not happening, right? So all those things you have to troubleshoot as part of the application. So that is very important and that's why I uh, recommend any DevOps engineer or cloud engineer to not just focus on infrastructure, but also focus a little bit on the application side of things as well. Because if you know a little bit about the application, then only you will be able to troubleshoot better and you, you know become a better DevOps engineer. Now the fourth point is related to observability, where you do you know monitoring, alerting, logging, and uh, you know this is where the tools like Prometheus, Grafana, Elasticsearch, Splunk, etc. comes in, and uh, you just try to make that observability stack robust because if you don't know when the problem occurs, you'll not be able to start your troubleshooting, right? So that's why it's very important to have that robust observability stack so that you know that whenever something is going down, you are the first one to know rather than your customers telling to you that, you know, one of your applications is down. So that's another uh, very important point. Now, the last point, which I already covered during the troubleshooting part is collaboration, because as a DevOps engineer, you will talk to multiple teams, right? It can be application teams, it can be database teams, it can be networking team, it can be security team, and like day in, day out, as a DevOps engineer, we talk to all these teams, right, and see if they have any new requirements, if they have any issues that they are facing, and then we just talk to them, collaborate, and resolve issues, right? So those are the six points that I wanted to cover in this entire video. Now, you'd be wondering like, okay, whatever you are working day in, day out, as a DevOps engineer, that's great, but what are the skills needed, right? For example, you will be building CI, CD day in, day out, so you should be comfortable with Git, Docker, Kubernetes, Helm Charts, Argo CD, Jenkins, etc., right? So that's why I have created a complete DevOps engineer roadmap, which you can watch by clicking on the link here. I've written about that on my website as well. Do check my website for uh, what are the skills needed for a DevOps engineer. I hope this video would be useful to you and uh, you would have liked it. Subscribe to this channel if you would love to see more contents around cloud, DevOps, etc. And uh, until then, you get to live, make the most out of it. Thank you.